In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in a word of prayer, Heavenly Father. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. It's a new year, and we all like new beginnings. How many of you made New Year's resolutions? None of you have. Okay. (laughs) That's all right. Maybe after the sermon you will. Because you've probably already broken all of them already. This morning, we are taken back to the very beginning, to Genesis, when God created the heavens and the earth. We are told that the earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. When God began his creating, the first thing we are told is that there is a certain chaos. There's no form, no shape, no light. Things are void and empty. There's no life yet. Everything, in a sense, is disordered. But we hear that the Spirit of God is hovering over the face of the waters. Where the Spirit is, there is life. And when the Word of God is spoken, the disorder is turned into order. The chaos is formed and shaped by God's Word into His good and orderly creation. Spirit, water, and Word. They combine to bring forth life. God speaks, let there be light, and there is. And so God orders the light and the darkness, and then follow the seas and the skies and the dry land, the plants and the trees, the day and the night, the heavenly bodies, the swarms of creatures that live in the sky and the air, the beasts that live on the earth, and finally the crown of his creation, Ish and Isha, Adam and Eve. And it is good, very good. But we soon hear another word, a word that does not create, but brings chaos and disorder and death. A word that does not water, but dries things up. A word that brings darkness, not light. A word of doubt, a word of unbelief. As Satan whispers into Eve's ear, did God really say? Is God's word really good? Is this order that God created really good? And when Eve bites from the forbidden fruit, there is chaos and disorder again. The disorder of death and sin. And so it was. And so it is. The waters don't stay in their place anymore. There are floods and tsunamis. The land isn't so solid anymore, is it? With earthquakes and volcanoes. The sky produces violent tornadoes and hurricanes. And then there is humanity that is fully disordered. And the chaos that we cause with our lies, our murdering, our stealing, our adultery, our deceits and betrays, our slander and envy and greed, our hatred and anger, our idolatries and blasphemy. All these things that make your life less than what God intended it to be. These chaotic things that come crashing down upon us and erupt from our hearts. These things disorder our lives. They disorder our homes and our marriages, our friendships, and our very being. And it is not so good. Not good at all. So why didn't God just wipe it out? Start all over. Because he loves you. And he loved Adam and Eve too. To wipe out the world and start over again would mean to wipe out 
the crown of his creation, his children, made in his very image, who were disordered by sin. He would not do this. No, God would not wipe out the chaos and the disorder. He would wipe it out in another way. And so we fast forward to the Gospel of Mark. It is interesting how Mark begins his Gospel. There is no mention of his conception or his birth. There are no angels, no shepherds, no wise men. There is no Bethlehem and there is no Jesus in the temple as a young boy. He lets Matthew and Luke and John fill in the details. Mark instead begins with John the Baptist and the chaos and disorder of the wilderness. And in his baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and then Jesus comes to be baptized. And when the word of God made flesh walks into those waters and the spirit comes down, you have exactly the scene as it was in the very beginning. Water, word, and spirit crying. And so Mark begins his gospel this way. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the beginning of the good news that in Jesus Christ, the Son of God has become flesh to begin a new creation. He has come to wipe out the chaos and disorder of sin and death. And so the Father is well pleased. And it is very good. So what is Jesus doing here? How is he beginning a new creation? How is he fulfilling all of the scriptures here at this place? Well, he is taking the place of you and me and all sinners. For it was sinners coming out to be baptized by John, the people coming from all over, confessing all of their sins and being baptized. But when Jesus comes, he does not confess. He has nothing to confess. But he is baptized. He is immersed in the putrid, stinking water of our sin like a sponge. He takes it all into himself to be the sinner for us. To be sin for us, as Paul says. And so Jesus is baptized into his death. For that is what it means to take on our sin and chaos and disorder. That he will wipe out in our place. He will be sacrificed for the sins of the entire world. Your sin and mine. And so that you may understand that, Mark connects Jesus' baptism with his death on the cross when he says that at Jesus' baptism, the heavens were torn open. The word here in the original Greek is schismed. Mark is the only gospel writer to use that word with Jesus' baptism. And then surprise, surprise, he uses it in only one other place in the gospel, it is at the end when Jesus dies on the cross. Mark tells us that the curtain was schismed. It was torn in two. Which isolated man from God. It was torn from top to bottom. Mark wants you to know because of these events of his baptism, his perfect life and his death on the cross, the division between God and man is over. The disorder and the chaos caused by sin is over. Jesus' death upon the cross means the wiping out of sin and the newness of life for his creation, a new creation. And it starts with Jesus' baptism. And it continues in your baptism. You see, baptism is the beginning of a new creation personally applied to you. That is why the Apostle Paul teaches us today in the book of Romans, just as Jesus joined himself to us in our sins in baptism, so you are now joined to Jesus and his righteousness in your baptism. For in baptism, Paul says that you are joined to Jesus' death and resurrection, so that not you, but the chaos, this disorder and death of sin be wiped out in you, and that you live a new life. Through baptism, you are a new creation in Jesus. 
Baptism is the beginning of the gospel for you. This is the greater baptism of which John spoke about. The baptism where water, word, and the spirit create new life. Sins are washed away. Heaven is torn open. And you become the child of God whom the Father now says, You are my beloved child. And I am well pleased with you. And you are. For as in the beginning when the water and the spirit and the word come together, great things happened. Life happened. Creation happened. And it still happens there at that baptismal font. And because of this, Luther would constantly say, every day, get up and say, I am baptized. That is, you are no longer that chaotic, disordered mess dying in sin. Instead, you are a new creation. Dying and rising with Christ has set you free from the slavery of sin and death to live a new life in Christ, a Christ life. Don't you know this, St. Paul says? Well, maybe we forget it sometimes. And we don't live like it. We get caught up in the chaos and the disorder. We get caught up in our sinful flesh that still goes along all the time. But at such times, do not despair. But remember, you are baptized. Not that you were baptized, but I am baptized. That's who you are. And you are who God says you are. And so each day, because our sinful flesh does sinful things, return to your baptism. Luther said, what does such baptizing with water indicate? It indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires so that a new man might arise and live forth in Christ. Alive in Christ Jesus, alive in his spirit, you now sponge up the sins of those who sin against you. Let me repeat that. You now sponge up the sins of those who sin against you with forgiveness and love. Paul tells us, do not repay evil with evil or anger for anger or sin of any other sin of sort. No, you've been set free from that. To repay to get back is living in chaos and disorder in the wilderness. No, you've been given much better. Christ and his spirit and his holiness lives in you. You eat and drink his body and blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins so that you might live in faith and fervent love to your neighbor. We are sojourning here right now to our home in heaven. You are a child of God. And that means everything changes. Yes, a child still learning to be sure, still growing, messing up daily and being forgiven, returning to those waters of absolution, receiving forgiveness. That's how he wants it. Not purposely sinning so that grace may abound, but knowing that grace does abound for you. His grace, which is greater than your sin, his grace which makes you new and can make your relationships new. That as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. And God saw everything that he made and behold it was very good. You know I'm actually glad that none of you raised your hands this morning saying you had a New Year's resolution. Take out the green sheet. Here's one for you. A treasure from the church father from Martin Luther. Luther writes these words, Now then, all of you who believe in God's word, let your watchword for entering the new year be this, I am baptized. Although the world may laugh at this comfort, the enthusiast vex its confidence. Nevertheless, abandon any other held pledges and speak only throughout the entire year to come. In all terrors of conscience, and necessity through sin and death. I am baptized into Christ. I am baptized into Christ. Alleluia. And you shall prevail. And every time of need you will find comfort in your baptism. 
on account of it, Satan will flee from your faith and confession and in death you will see heaven open and finally come into the joy of your Lord to celebrate a great year of jubilee, a year of praise with all the angels forever and ever. Amen. So say with me together, I am baptized into Christ. I am baptized into Christ. Alleluia. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith to Christ Jesus, to life everlasting. Amen.